Hello and welcome to the seventh video in our iNav series. Now, so far we've talked about what iNav is, how it works, how to connect things like the external GPS and magnetometer to your flight controller, how to configure it and set it up on a multi-rotor, and now we are going to put it onto this fixed wing model here. Now, in the last video, we spent a bit of time talking about how you connect up the external GPS and do the basic configuration for the hardware to make sure that we are ready for this video, where we're going to connect this model up to the computer, and we're going to go through the steps, what you need to do to get it all working fine. Now, as with all of the other videos, everything that we're going to cover in here is already documented in the wiki, and the work that we're doing here on the channel is feeding back into the wiki, so things are being updated all the time. Now, everything that we're going to cover in here is for the setup of a fixed wing in iNav 1.5. In 1.6 and future versions, a lot of this stuff that's a little bit manual at the moment is going to be automated and made a lot easier for setup. So if you are using something later than version 1.5, have a look later in the video series. As the later versions come out, I'll explain the differences of how the setup works. But in this video, what we're going to do is go through the basic setup and configuration. So by the end of it, you'll be ready to go out and have a go at getting this thing ready to fly. Now, again, I'm going to assume that you have a little bit of understanding for the interface and that you are familiar with something like beta flight or clean flight. And because of that, we're going to go through it at a reasonable pace. But the majority of the setup in the graphical user interface and the configuration steps are the same as a multi-rotor. There's just a couple of extra things that obviously we're going to have to think about here. The fact it's a plane. So first of all, let's go through the basic setup and configuration for this guy. So what I'm going to do is plug this plane into the computer, start iNav, and we've talked about flashing iNav in the last video. So we're going to connect to it and start to configure everything up. First point of order, of course, is that make sure that the props are not installed. At some point during this setup, we are going to have to install the prop and take this plane out to fly. We have a flying wing here. We're actually using this Texumo, and I don't want the motor starting uncommanded by a problem or something that I've got wrong with the setup. So do make sure that your props are off. So if you have a flight battery installed and you're testing everything out, then you don't have a big problem. Second thing is install the latest iNav onto the board and select the plane type. Now you should have done that in the last video anyway, because that's how we figured out where we were plugging in the ESCs and the servos for the elevons on a plane. But using that same methodology, we could also figure out where we need to plug standard elevator, rudder and ailerons in as well. First thing we really need to do is do the calibration of the accelerometer. Now, although we installed the magnetometer in the last video, it isn't needed to fly a wing. The iNav code that's flying a fixed wing actually uses the position of the GPS from moment to moment to interpret the heading and direction of the plane, so we don't need a compass. So the first thing we're gonna do is calibrate the accelerometer exactly the same way as before, lay the plane down flat in the orientation that it should be in the air, and if it's a rail plane, that probably means that you have to pop the tail up slightly, and the wing is how it's actually going to sit in the air. Usually a model plane on the bench will actually sit with its tail on the ground, so put something under the tail so it's nice and level. Go into the main configuration, click calibrate accelerometer, and then follow the instructions, moving the plane round direction by direction so that each of the individual sides of the plane face down, one after the other, until you've done all six. Now, you don't have to be exactly 90 degrees with this. It's, if you're close enough, the calibration will still be successful. And the tip that we've got here is that each of the individual positions doesn't have to be done in any particular order, so long as the first position that you start off for the first time you click calibrate accelerometer is when the plane is in that level position. So as an aid memoir, I tend to just follow what's in the manual and go with the plane in each of the positions and between each of those click calibrate accelerometer. Don't bother about calibrating the magnetometer. If it's found and configured one, go into the configuration settings and say compass is none, and that way then they won't worry about that at all. You can enable it, but for the feedback from the developers and other pilots is that iNav actually works better on a fixed wing with the magnetometer turned off, so that's what we're doing here. 
Now the omnibus flight controller that we're using here will power the receiver as well when you plug it in. So we have made a model, uh, again it's on the Tyrannus, there's no mixing, there's no cleverness at all, and what we've done is just made sure that each of the inputs move in exactly the right way. So that's, they don't go below a thousand, they don't go above two thousand, and all of the main controls, the elevator, throttle, rudder, all settle at 1500. We've also assigned a mode switch and we've also set up an arming switch as well because stick arming isn't recommended for a plane because you might get in a situation where you have low throttle for more than five seconds, by default disarm the craft, or you might have a situation where you have no throttle and you have full left rudder and again that would disarm the craft as well. So set up a switch for arming on your radio. Once we've got to that stage, then we are pretty much ready to put the battery in. And once we've got the battery in, then it should start to move the servos around. Now, the thing we need to do here is to just move the elevator and aileron side to side and make sure that each of the servos and the outputs are moving in the correct direction. Now, typically one of ours wasn't, so what we did was go into the servo tab and then on the right hand side we clicked the reverse servo so at the moment we have these rates here on the right hand side 100 is one direction minus 100 is the other direction the other thing we found when we did this is the throws were huge and much more than we actually needed. So on a Texuma like this, I'm only after about 50 millimeter of throw for both the elevator and the aileron. So what I did is I dialed back those rates. So rather than be 100 and minus 100, we ended up at the numbers that you can see on the screen. And that gave me exactly the 15 millimeters throw that I needed for the model. The other thing that I did as well is I've already flown this Texumo, so I've got a rough idea where the control surfaces need to be for straight and level flight. In fact, we did a little video where we talked about what that angle needs to be on a Texumo, and I've used that myself to remind myself what the angle needs to be for other Texumos that I've built subsequently. However, what you need to do is set all of the servos to 90 degrees. So what I would do is I would enable live outputs here on the left hand side and then change the PWM value, the middle position here, and once you stop moving it and uh, click off that box, you'll notice that the servo will jump into position. As a rule, I would always make sure that the servos that are controlling the control surfaces on a plane are exactly 90 degrees. That gives you equal throws in either direction, and that's just good practice. Most plane pilots will be very familiar with that. So in here, go in the servo tab, make sure they're moving the right direction, use the middle position to make sure that the servos are at 90 degrees, and then mechanically set the links so that all of the control surfaces are at the right deflection for straight and level flight. If you haven't pre-flown the model to find out what those corrections need to be, we'll cover that in a couple of slides time. But for me, I know what they need to be, so I can set that up once we've done all the pieces in software and make sure that the control surfaces are gonna work for me. Next thing we need to do then is go into modes. We need to be able to check the correct correction in angle or horizon mode so pop it into something like angle mode and move the model around now the way i tend to do this is i try and tend to move it with one of the control surfaces reasonably still and my finger resting on the top and what you want to feel is as you move the wing up you want to feel the control surface pushing up against your finger to correct that uncommanded movement. Make sure that all of the controls are moving in that way, and if they are, then you are getting in a good place. Do make sure that you go into the failsafe tab and make sure that when you turn your radio off, it's either set for no pulses and you set the default so that the failsafe mode is selected, I've set my Tyrannus up here with the receiver to set up a no pulse condition and when no pulses are detected it automatically goes into fail safe. And the last thing we need to do then is replace the default PIDs and the command line interface settings to suit your model. So let's do that on the next slide. All of the settings and the PIDs that's there by default in 1.5 of iNav are really for multi-rotors, so we do need to change a few things. Now, in the wiki, it has some words of advice here, but I'm just going to give you some general rules of thumb to help you get the model ready for its first test flight. Because once you've got it flying around and you've got a rough idea of how it's all going to work, 
then you have the option of going in and tweaking to get it working exactly in the way that you want to. Now the first thing we need to talk about are the PIDs. Now the PIDs typically for something like a wing are going to be the P value for pitch and roll are going to be 20 to 30, the I value is going to be between about 40 or 50, and the D value should be zero. Now obviously the your stuff is all going to be zero because we don't want the flight controller thinking about your at all. Again, spend a bit of time having a look through the wiki to read up on the very latest and greatest pieces in there. And what I recommend is if you are flying a plane and you get it working, then share those PID settings back with the community and the developers so we can help set up a repository. And that repository can also be used to help automate some of this setup in the later versions of iNav. For the first flight, you probably don't want to be as high as P values of 20 to 30, I values of 40 to 50, and D at zero, you probably want to be about half that value. So maybe P of kind of 10 to 15, and I of 20, 25. And the reason for that is you can easily increase that if you find that the flight isn't as you want it, but if it's too high, then it can induce oscillation in the craft. So if you start a little bit lower, then once you've got it working fine, you can bump those up piece by piece until you get the plane feeling nice and crisp. The next thing that you should also consider is all of the things that need changing for the settings for your plane. Now, if we actually look in the command line interface itself and we search for anything that starts with nav underscore FW underscore, all of these settings are actually the ones that the iNav software uses to fly the fixed wing. You'll have noticed that there's also command line interface stuff for multi-copters or multi-rotors as well. So anything that's nav underscore MC is for multi-rotors and FW is for fixed wing. Now there are some really good pieces in the wiki that show you what each of the settings should be. And what I did here is I just copied each of those into a little Word document. Then I copy and pasted that Word document directly into the CLI pressed enter and each of those was set and then I saved at the end. That save reboots the flight controller, then you can go back in and what I'd recommend is having a look at each of these nav underscore FW settings and all of the ones that you've just changed to make sure they make sense. Things like increasing the maximum angle available for things like the angle mode is really important because it's actually far more than you need on a fixed wing than you would on something like a multi-rotor. The only other thing that I'd recommend, a little tip here, I'd increase the nav waypoint radius to 5,000, that's uh, five meters. That should be enough for most planes to get to in calm conditions. If you're going to do any navigation stuff later on, the waypoint radius is really tight and it's tight in iNav for the multi-rotors, but obviously with a plane, you tend to need a little bit of a larger target. So that's worthwhile remembering as well. Now we've already talked about the modes for the test flight and in the next video we'll actually go through the process to test your model to make sure that it's going to fly and do a similar thing to what we did earlier in the series with the multi-rotor where we went through each of the pieces one by one till we got to the point where we're happy that the advanced GPS functionality was working fine. You're probably going to want to take off for your very first flight in either angle or horizon mode. And the reason for that is that iNav then will be doing its job and correcting for any problems and trying to get that plane nice and level. Now you obviously need to be ready to catch it in case the angle mode needs a little bit of adjustment, but a lot of the pilots that I've spoken to prefer to take off in something like angle or horizon mode because you could potentially have less problems than starting in something with pass through. Now, now we'll talk about that a lot in the next video, but what I would recommend for now is make sure that you can arm and that you can select either angle or horizon mode and everything looks good. Couple of last things here, consider selecting don't spin the motor when armed. By default that's turned off, so as soon as you arm the board the motor starts running. Now that might not be a problem if you're looking at something like the wing that we're setting up here, but it might be a problem if you're going to put it onto something that has a nice sleek shape and can soar very well. On those kind of models, you are going to want to drop the throttle to zero to have the motor stop running and potentially have the props fold back for aerodynamic efficiency. 
I have turned on don't submit the motor when armed because that's exactly what I want to do here. I want to be able to turn it off and also when I'm coming into land I like to be able to have the motor not running so when I land the wing on the grass it isn't churning away before I can disable the craft. Once you have got all of that set up then you've done the vast majority of the stuff that we need to go out and fly. So now you're at the stage where you have got INAV on the board, you've calibrated the accelerometers, double check that the position of the plane and as you move the plane, the position of the vehicle in the interface is the same as well. You wanna make sure that when you push the nose of the plane down, the nose in the GUI goes down and vice versa. It's very easy to get that wrong and that will make a right mess of your flight. You also need to make sure that the controls on the radio move the servos in the right direction and that also when you put the plane into angle mode as you move the plane around that the control surface are moving slightly to counteract that uncommanded movement. Make sure that you've got your fail safe set up so if it all goes wrong then at least uh, you'll be able to recover the vehicle and you won't lose it forever. You've gone in and you have set the PIDs, so they are now the latest and greatest version. Again, I'd probably underspec them slightly for your first flight because it's easier to then bump them up in later flights. Changed all of the stuff that's in the wiki and gone through and made sure that those all make sense for your craft. Increased the nav waypoint radius and then made sure that we can access an angle or horizon mode for this initial takeoff that we'll talk about setting up in the next video in the series. So join me in that next video where we're going to spend a little bit of time looking at those pieces and how you can make sure that you have INAV set up and working well on your plane. Thank you for taking the time to watch that video. There are lots of other videos on the channel and they're carefully ordered into playlists. So you may find that there are other videos on this same subject that you can go and watch. So I would recommend going into the playlist area of Painless360 YouTube channel and looking around and seeing what there is. You never know what you might find. Thanks for watching. Please like, subscribe and happy flying.